Bill Wren is here with Wise Nurseries in Statesboro, Georgia. I want to briefly demonstrate the proper way to install a container grown plant. For this demonstration, I've chosen a 7 gallon falling water bald cypress because it does have some size to it, but yet it's kind of lightweight and easy to handle for this demonstration. But the concepts I'm about to demonstrate do apply to most container grown material from small one gallon perennials all the way up to large tall hundred gallon trees. Now first, don't take a really nice tree and put it in a really crummy hole. And what I mean by that is it's important for you to dig your hole properly and a, what a proper hole looks like is twice to three times the width of the root ball of the plant you're putting in the ground, yet the same depth. And what this does is this gives the top feeder root room to expand and jump and get well established, and yet it gives it a soft foundation where the tree doesn't settle deeper into the ground over time. That's very bad. You want the tree to stay at the grade you installed it at. Now, when digging your hole, the bottom of the hole should be flat so that you make full contact. You don't want any sharp dips or air pockets that's going to get underneath that tree and end up creating an area where the roots are sitting in an air pocket because that can be very bad. It will end up hurting the tree very seriously over the long run and could even kill that plant. Now. We're going to take this tree out of its container. And this is pretty, pretty, got pretty tough trunk and root ball, but you want to try to avoid handling a lot of material, especially small material, as least as possible by the trunk to make sure you don't actually damage the plant. Um, you want to look if you have any circling root, you can kind of roughen up that root ball, kind of loosen things up. Just kind of get it so it's out of its circling mode, but yet not, don't rough it up too much. Um, you can practice this technique more in the fall and winter because the tree is less apt to shock. But it's very important in the uh, late spring and summer not to do this too drastically because the tree could defoliate. If you see any circling roots, you can go ahead and take this time to trim those. Now the tree is ready to be installed in the ground. Now, most importantly, if you look at the root ball, it's actually a hair higher than the original grade of the ground around it. And this is very important so the top feeder roots can breathe. General rule of thumb, you want the exact same level, if not hair high is better than a hair low. Now that we know we have the depth set properly, we're going to put in our biotone. Now this particular product is very good. It's got several different types of beneficial bacteria and fungi in it that actually grow on the root fibers and has a symbiotic relationship with the plant to help transferring water and nutrients. This is applied directly to the bottom of the hole. 
on a seven gallon we're going to use about two two and a half cups on the package it does list how much you actually want to use and now we're ready to actually put the tree in for good now at this point if you're using a soil amendment you want to blend it with the soil around the hole that you're going to backfill with and that's really a judgment call um, we'll elaborate more on our website on whether or not to use soil amendments sometimes they're important sometimes they're not as important uh, proper planning and fertilization and watering definitely take a front row seat in uh, what's actually going to make that tree take off well but soil amendments can be very important as well if you have very poor soil conditions uh, where and key word soil amendment you don't backfill it with this pure content you mix it 50 50 or depending on the demands it might be less than that um, you can use less than a 50-50 blend if it's not that bad but the most you really want to use is a 50-50 blend and soil amendments typically come in handy with just extremely sandy soil or extremely clay soil to really break it up and or uh, you know if, if it's thick hard clay so it breathes or if it's really sandy and there's just absolutely no organic matter in the soil whatsoever um, from uh, just very sandy soil. Um, so soil mints definitely have their place if needed. At this point, I'm going to blend it. Now, as you can see, the tree is slightly crooked. You want to start to get an idea of where you actually want it. And just lightly backfill about one third of the hole. And this is when you can give it a little water to help it settle. Not too much. You don't want to make it muddy and milky. And then you want to really now look at making sure it's just straight and how you actually want it to do the final setting. Um, an old broke off shovel handle or broom handle works well or you, if it's small material you can get down there with your hands and pack it in either or but it's really important to make sure there's no air pockets very important Pretty straight. What a beautiful tree these fall water are. They're just gorgeous. Really make good accents and cool side facts about uh, any type of uh, bald cypress, uh, the regular cultivars or the uh, falling waters is they're actually one of the most versatile landscape trees in Georgia. They can take high dry ground and they can also do low wetlands. And uh, either types make beautiful accents along the pond's edge, but don't actually plant them in the water. Plant them where the roots can tap into the water. But they'll do a high dry spot as well, very easy. It's just a very adverse, tough landscape tree. I'm just making sure I got this packed firmly. 
No air pockets. I'm gonna fill in more. About another third of the hole. Once again, I'm gonna pack. Oops. Nice and firm. Very important. Nice and firm. You want no air pockets. You want this ground to hold that tree snugly so that it's less apt to rock in the hole. Also, don't be scared to get your hands dirty. Like I said, a lot of times on larger trees, I use a stick because it's easier. And because the hole is so much deeper, but on smaller material, sometimes you could just get down there with your hands and just pack it in real tight. Now I'm going to go ahead and top off my hole the final time. Get a little bit of grass in there or something. It's not that big a deal. Um, as far as, you know, broke up blades and stuff. But uh, you definitely wouldn't want to be planting seeds down there. That's just going to cause problems in the long run as far as weeding. Uh, not the best practice. I'm packing again. Firm, firm, firm. Okay, and as you notice, see how this is slightly bulging from the surface? I do have one root I overlooked crossing over at the top. You can examine it again, especially if it's during the uh, fall and winter months. Be careful root pruning much, though, during the uh, spring and summer. Now, at this point, I'm going to take my leaf rake. Now, there's a lot of controversy on whether to build a watering berm around to plant a tree. And really, it's not the best practice, believe it or not. And here's why. It actually inhibits your top feeder roots from wanting to reach out there and spread. Okay? It actually creates a, a ring around the tree that the roots can't breathe oxygen when they go under that. So it actually will inhibit fast root expansion to an extent. Now, you have to make an educated decision though because if the tree's planted in a rural location that's difficult to water and you gotta ride down bio on the four wheeler or stretch the hose out several hundred feet or at the end of the driveway there's no water source and you gotta fill that watering berm up, that's still better than uh, uh, not and putting one in so that's a judgment call if it's in a very rural location where you need to fill that berm up then uh, put a little three or four inch ring outside key outside of the drip line for root zone okay uh, and use that to fill up water um, but once you're done with that uh, six months a year down the road make sure you pull it back away from the tree not towards it suffocating the roots okay but if it's in an irrigated location all right, don't put a watering berm around it. Just get level with the surrounding grape. At this point, we go ahead and water one more time. Make sure everything's settled properly. I'm getting this uh, shower going. Give it a little wiggle. There's no air pockets in there. You can 
pack. Actually, even one more time, that's not going to hurt. Get a little bit of water down there. Make sure it's selling properly. But try not to get it too muddy because you won't get the compaction. Okay, you want to balance between getting it to settle well, but yet not making it milky. Now, I'm going to do my final grade around the tree. And as you can see, it's slightly bulging out of the ground, just a hair. Now, at this point, if you're using root stimulator, which is the other star fertilizer uh, we found that works real well, which is a liquid, predominantly phosphate, with a little bit of nitrogen in it, um, for root expansion as well, uh, you want to actually mix it in a bucket and just gently pour it on top. So, uh, um, root stimulator goes on top, or if you're using bio starter, put it on the bottom of the hole. Uh, very important, mulch, 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 whether it's pine straw, wood chips, um, pine bark, it's going to help shade the roots during the summer and lock moisture in from evaporating. It's also going to help suppress the weeds around the, uh, the tree. Um, if using pine straw, put it on pretty thick. Usually about six inches of fluff because it'll settle. I could even use twice as much as that and that'll be good for the video. Um, but uh, And also, you will get twice the growth out of a tree or plant if you keep the sod off of it, okay? I come up in landscapes a lot. People have very slow growing material. They're wondering what's the matter with it. Even in an irrigated lawn, they even fertilized it. And I come to the landscape and find the grass is growing right up to the trunk. Big no-no if you're looking for rapid growth, okay? Now, with that said, um, if you are in a very exposed location, all right, this is when you want to actually stake the tree. There's more of that um, on our website. If you go to www.wisenurseries.com, at the top of the page, there's plant info. Click on that. There's more detailed information on how to install a tree or plant properly, along with much other uh, very, very good reads to help you be more successful in your landscape.